好，二零一八年嘅第三條題目呢，就係講葉嘅結構嘅。咁呢兩幅圖啦 ，X 同埋 Y 呢，就分別嚟自於兩款不同嘅植物嘅物種嘅。咁你見到啦，都有唔同嘅結構啦 ，PQ、R 同埋圍管束啦。咁有返好習慣啦。P 咧就係山狀葉肉細胞 ，Q 咧就係海綿葉肉細胞，而 R 咧就係表皮細胞。咁啊 Part A 第一部分咧就叫我哋比較下啲細胞嘅形狀。咁啊 P、Q、R 咧，佢喺 X 嗰度揾得見，但系咧喺 Y 嗰度就睇唔見嘅。咁呢條題目咧就係考我哋認唔認得到啲組織嘅啫。咁所以我哋咧一睇咧已經知得到噶啦，就係咧山狀葉肉細胞呢啲長條形嘅植物細胞咧，就喺 Y 嘅呢幅圖係睇唔見嘅。Q 呢，海绵叶肉細胞，你喺 Y 呢幅图都都仲见到呢啲波波嘅。表皮細胞呢，你就更加见得到上下都一定有一浸啦。即系去到 Part Two 啦，佢就要我哋睇返 X 嘅呢一张相啦，就讲下啦喺第一部分所去提及嘅呢个组织，即係山状叶肉細胞，有冇一啲可以观察到嘅适应性特征呢？咁次不然啦，就要我哋去 recall 返啦。次不然啦，就係考返我哋有关于山状叶肉細胞嘅適应性特征啦。又要提多一次啦，既然我哋讲緊適应性特征，就係要讲緊佢个结构同埋佢个功能要拉上关系啦。所以啦，作为一个山状叶肉細胞，咁佢点样可以帮助到块叶啊去做工合作用咧？就系啦，排得好紧密啦，同埋啦，摆喺叶嘅叶面部分就容易啲接收到阳光，去吸收多啲阳光做光合作用啦。好，而呢條題目呢，有啲咩嘅變奏呢？佢就可以問下你啦。一塊葉仲有啲乜嘢嘅適應性特徵呢？嗱，佢唔一定要考返你呢幅圖㗎。嚇，佢純粹齋問你適應性特徵都可以㗎嘛。係啦，海綿葉肉細胞，咁無論佢係有俾幅圖你，定還是冇俾幅圖你呢，你都見得到佢哋排列得呢冇咁緊密嘅，咁啊形成到一啲氣室啦，就容許到啲空氣呢喺塊葉入面呢，就能夠快速咁樣去擴散啦。又或者問下你個表皮細胞啦，嗱，佢真係。唔一定要俾幅图你噶吓，都系嗰句，佢唔一定要俾一个环切面图你嘅，佢直接将嗰个叶嘅表皮細胞搣出嚟，跟住叫你观察都得嘅。佢哋排列得好紧密，就能够保护到喺个叶入面嘅細胞啦。又或者啦，佢系透明嘅，嗱、这、呢个更加冇可能俾幅图你啦，就直头斋问你表皮細胞有咩特别哦。佢哋系透明嘅，就容许到光线呢系可以穿过佢，而到达到能够做到光合作用嘅组织嘅。例如山狀葉肉細胞啦，或者係海綿葉肉細胞嘅。一般嘅表皮細胞咧，佢哋都係透明嘅，除咗保衞細胞，佢哋係有葉綠體啦。而有關於保衞細胞啦，對於佢嘅適應性特徵，你又識唔識咧 ？Part B 啦，佢就講翻啦，喺 Y 嘅呢張圖嘅呢塊葉咧，其實啦，放翻大嚟睇，睇翻佢張相咧，原來佢成塊葉係垂直而生嘅。题目咧就要我哋解释一下啦，喺呢块叶入面能够做到光合作用嘅组织，佢哋嘅分布同呢块叶能够垂直而生，究竟有啲咩嘅关系咧？而呢条题目咧就想我哋去认知翻光合作用嘅组织嘅分布，对于块叶去吸收光能咧，究竟有啲咩嘅重要性咧？而今次啦，为咗帮大家容易啲理解呢条题目呢，我就利用返逆向思维帮大家去理解啦。但係陣间我哋答嘅时候呢，都係顺返住个方向嘅，即係逆向而諗，但係顺势而答嘅。咁啊，一开始啦，我哋就先去理解下一般嘅叶呢，我哋眼见佢都係水平面嘅。咁即係话啦，叶面呢，係能够接收到多啲光嘅，係咪？而相反啦，一个垂直摆嘅叶呢，咁其实个叶嘅两面呢，佢都有同等嘅机会呢去接收到光线，即係话啦，佢哋接收到嘅光度啦，可能都係差唔多嘅。咁所以啦，返返落去个题目呢，我哋就要知道啦，当一塊叶垂直而生嘅话呢，叶嘅两面其实都有机会接触到阳光，就唔似水平生啦。水平生呢，就叶面呢，就一定大啲机会接收到阳光嘅。所以啦，对于一棵植物，佢嘅叶系垂直而生嘅话呢。佢塊葉嘅光合作用嘅組織，其實亦都係可以平均地分布，就唔似 X 呢一塊葉啦。佢呢塊葉呢，擺到明就係葉面呢係多一啲能夠做到光合作用嘅組織嘅，咁會導致到啦呢棵植物呢。即使嗰個太陽啦係不斷咁移位啦，照嘅方向咧亦都會改變啦，就會導致到呢一款嘅植物呢。即使啦，隨住時間過去啦，咁個太陽咧就東面移去西面啦，咁啊即使啦日照嘅方向唔同咗啊，但係呢棵植物呢，係仍然能夠有效地去進行光合作用嘅。咁呢个题目啦，仲有啲咩嘅变奏呢？就呢两张相呢，係之前呢我去行山嘅时候影嘅。咁啊呢个啦就係好明显啊，叶面呢係深色啲嘅，叶底係浅色啲嘅。我佢要你解释下囉，点解啦？叶面叶底佢哋嘅
綠色係唔同嘅呢？或者個深色啲，一個淺色啲，點解呢？同佢係水平咁樣擺有咩嘅關係呢？都可以問返你三分㗎。好，又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目呢，就叶呢去做个起点嘅，就问我哋结构啦，同埋方向啦，结构啦，又系嗰句啦，适应性特征啦，功能啦，尤其是今次呢，就问下啦，光合作用组织嘅分布啦。第二啦，就係块叶嘅摆位啦，水平摆啊，定係垂直摆呢？两者啦，就帮我哋呢去研究返一棵植物嘅光合作用呢，做得好定唔好嘅。而呢条题目呢，都有关科学探究事嘅，就係、是、利用显微镜。去觀察翻一塊葉嘅環切面啦，究竟塊葉嘅內在結構有啲咩咁特別呢？咁啊，過往啦都有唔少題目噶啦，尤其是就係攞個顯微鏡去睇個氣孔啊，正正就係呢款題目嘅變奏啦。To what next question three is about the leaves of the plant, so we can see from the photomicrograph X and Y, they shows the cross section of two leaves taken from different plant species. You can see the different structures, P, Q, R, and the vascular bundle. So for the good practice. We need to label them first: parasite mesophyll cells, spongy mesophyll cells, and the epidermal cells. For part A number one, comparing the cell shape of both leaves, which labeled T so PQR in photomicrograph X is absent from photomicrograph Y. This question is checking us: Can we recognize the tissues in the leaves? So we can see that the tissue P, parasite mesophyll cells, they are absent in the photomicrograph Y. So for the spongy mesophyll cells, so we can still see these spherical cells in the photomicrograph Y, and also the epidermal cell, they are on the both sides of the leaves. And for the part two, with reference to the photomicrograph X, what is the observable adaptive feature of these tissues identified in part one? That means the parasite mesophyll cells. And what is the significance of the adaptive features? So we need to recall the adaptive features of the parasite mesophyll cells. Remember that when we talking about the adaptive features, we need to put the structure and the functions together. How can this structure? How can this feature help the organism to perform a particular function well? So we need to point out the specialized features of the parasite mesophyll cells for the function, which is the photosynthesis. So they are closely packed and located at the upper side of the leaf, facing the sunlight directly to maximize the light absorption for photosynthesis. Plant to absorb more light and for a rapid. Photosynthesis. So any possible question variation. So the question may not give you the photomicrograph, and it will just ask you that the adaptive features of a particular structure. For example, the spongy mesophyll cells. No matter you have the photomicrograph or not, you can see that they are loosely packed to form the air space. It allows a rapid gas exchange inside the leaf for gas exchange. Secondly, for the epidermal cells, we do not need to rely on the photomicrograph. We can just simply point out that they are closely packed and protect the inner layer of the cell. Or the question it may give you the top view of the leaves, or they remove the whole layer of the epidermal cell for observation by using the microscope, and you can see that the epidermal cells they are closely packed. And for the second one, the epidermal cells they are transparent. And allow the light to pass through and reach the parasite mesophyll cells, the spongy mesophyll cells, which are the photosynthetic tissues. For the epidermal cells, most of them they are transparent except the gut cell, because the gut cell they contain the corpus and they are in green color for photosynthesis. And for the adaptive features of the gut cell, are you familiar with it? And for puppy, the leaves in photomicrograph Y was taken from a plant species with leaf oriented vertically, as shown in the following photograph. Explain how the distribution of the photosynthetic tissues in these leaves is related to the vertical orientation of the leaves. In this question, we need to realize the importance of the photosynthetic tissue distribution in the leaves for light absorption. And in this time, I would like to use the reverse thinking to help you to understand the direction of illumination, the horizontal orientation of the leaves, and we can observe that the upper side of the leaf will receive more sunlight than lower side of the leaves. And what about the vertical orientation of the leaf? So both sides of the leaf receive similar amount of light. Both sides of the leaf they have the chance to receive the light. So we can see that when the leaves are oriented vertically, both sides of the leaves have chance of receiving sunlight. Therefore, the photosynthetic tissue are evenly distributed on both sides of the leaf. It will not be the case of the photomicrograph 
X. So you can see the paleosomisophyll cells, they are closely packed and concentrate the upper sides of the leaves because the sunlight they will shine on the upper surface more than the lower surface. Such that photosynthesis can be carried out effectively regardless of the change in the orientation of the sun, the direction of the illumination from sun during daytime. And any possible question variation, it can ask you to explain that the difference of the green color on both sides of the leaves is related to the horizontal orientation of the leaves. I took these two pictures when I went hiking, you can see the both sides of the leaves. The upper sides they are a bit dark green. And for the lower side, yeah, but pale green. So hope that you are able to answer this question. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping for the leaves. We can check your concept about the structure and the orientation. For the structure, always we talk about it, adaptive features and the function. But for this question, it asks you about the distribution of the photosynthetic tissues. And for the orientation, it talks about the leaves. They are horizontally orientated or vertically orientated. And then we can study the photosynthetic rate of these two types of plants species and different time and then we use the microscope for the scientific investigation to study the structure of the cross-section of the leaf and in the past there are different MC questions of using the microscope especially for using the microscope to study the stomata